Hey everyone, it's Ariana, and this is some of the most mind-blowing chicken you'll ever eat. It's called Takanjon, and it's this sweet and crispy Korean fried chicken that's unlike anything I've ever had before. The chicken is perfectly crunchy on the outside and covered in an amazing spicy sweet sticky sauce. Start by covering four cubed chicken breasts with a cup of buttermilk, and then season with some salt, white pepper, and garlic powder. Give that a stir and then pop it into the fridge to marinate for an hour overnight. Then to your bowl, add one and a half cups of flour, plus your baking powder, dried thyme, chili flakes, paprika, salt, and pepper. This is gonna be the crispy coating for the outside of our chicken, so add your chicken in there and stir it around and then fry your chicken in hot oil for a couple minutes on each side till they're nice and golden I fry the chicken in batches so it cooks evenly and doesn't overcrowd the pan Finally for our sauce, we're gonna simmer soy sauce, ginger, garlic, sesame oil, brown sugar, honey, and gochujang Which is this insanely delicious spicy Korean fermented chili paste And then simmer for five minutes and coat the chicken Then top with a sprinkle of toasted sesame, red pepper flakes, and sliced scallions Let me know which dishes you'd like to see next Check out the full recipe on my Instagram and follow for more food from around the world Frozen garlic bread? How about 15 minute garlic bread? Medium bowl. One cup of salted butter, soften. A quarter cup, fresh chopped parsley. Four cloves of garlic, crush them all. Beans. In half cup of parmesan. Mix together till it looks like this. Shabbat. Cut in half, lengthwise. Take half your butter and just spread it all. All over. Don't they just look beautiful? Baking sheet, garlic bread, on. Into the oven, 400. For about 10 minutes. Take it out. Oh my lord. Oh, le petit croissant. Oh, my lord. I'm about to bust. A little bit of flaky salt, black pepper. She's just right and juicy. <laughs> Here's another quick and easy recipe for spicy peanut noodles. First step is to cook your favorite noodles. In a bowl, mix in one and a half tablespoons of peanut butter, one tablespoon of chili oil, two tablespoons of soy sauce, and one tablespoon of sweet black vinegar. Grate in one clove of garlic, Add two tablespoons of water from the noodles and then mix everything together so that the peanut butter is nice and creamy. Drain the noodles and then add it to the bowl and mix together. Top this off with some chopped green onions and then add another teaspoon of chili oil. And there you have it, another easy recipe. Hey everyone, it's Ariana, and today we're making the BDA tacos that are taking social media by storm. These were honestly some of the best things I've ever put in my mouth. First, I rehydrated three guajillo chilies in hot water, and then seasoned up two and a half pounds of our beef roast with salt and pepper. Then I added it to a super hot pan and seared it on all the sides until it was nice and golden. This helps develop the flavor. Then I added about half an onion, which I broke up, and five cloves of garlic, sauteing that in the oil. Once the onions are translucent, add them to a blender along with the chilies, and a teaspoon of paprika, Mexican oregano, and cumin, plus a can of chipotle in adobo, a half a cup of crushed tomatoes, and a fourth a cup of vinegar blending this up coat your meat in the sauce and then pop it in the fridge to marinate for a couple hours or overnight then add your meat to a pot with about four cups of broth and six cloves a cinnamon stick some bay leaves and half an onion after simmering this on medium low for about three hours it should be completely falling apart and i just shredded it up with two forks dip the tortilla into the sauce and then add it to a pan with some cheese the meat and more of the sauce frying it on both sides till it was nice and crispy and finishing them with some chopped onions and cilantro check out the full recipe on my instagram where i reply to all my followers comments I'm going to share my mom's secrets on how to make the crispiest and best crumb chicken, so you're just going to have to trust us on this one. Crack four eggs into a shallow bowl and whisk together with water and crushed garlic cloves and leave to marinate. Cut the tenderloin off the chicken breast and then using a sharp knife, cut the chicken breast in half crosswise. Place that chicken breast in between two pieces of glad wrap and then use the smooth side of a mallet to pound it out until it's an even size of thickness. For the breadcrumbs, we need some finely chopped parsley and rosemary and add it to a blender with that torn up stale bread. Blend until you have a chunky texture. Whisk together some flour and salt and begin crumbing your chicken by placing it into the flour, then placing it into the egg wash and then generously coating it in those chunky breadcrumbs. Add a generous amount of olive oil to a pan and fry that chicken until it's crispy and golden. Dip it into a dipping sauce of your choice and have you guys heard of the spot that slings halal smash burgers on San Fernando Road? This is Mr. Patty's in Glendale, California. They will literally smash two patties in front of you. Let's get one thing straight. These two patties are made for one burger. And did I mention they add double cheese? Your bun will come with a swirl of mustard and ketchup to ensure you taste it. They'll add a few onions and pickles and like I said, you're gonna get both patties in one burger. If you're really hungry, I recommend ordering two, but if not, you can always order their perfectly seasoned fries. I'm not gonna lie, for my date experience, we ordered three servings of their french fries and four smash burgers. Okay, so now that you know this place exists, who are you taking here? 
Hey everyone, it's Ariana, and today we're making the fan favorite Tong Hulu, which is this crunchy and delicious candied fruit snack that originated in China. It's so fun and easy to make. Today we're doing it with strawberries, so cut off the tops and add them to skewers. And then all you need to make the candy coating on the outside is a half a cup of sugar plus a fourth of a cup of water. You don't want to stir this mixture because that will cause the sugar to crystallize, so just give it a little swirl in the pan and then simmer it till it turns this light golden brown color, and then you can dip your strawberries in. I want to make this with more fruit, so let me know what I should try next. This is how you make the best Mexican rice. You're going to add olive oil, your rice. You're going to let it toast a little bit. Don't burn it, though. A can of tomato sauce. Let's do some math. If you added a cup of rice, you're going to add two cups of water. Some consomme de pollo, some garlic powder, and then you're going to add salt. You're going to cover that up for like five minutes, then add lime juice. Let it sit there for like 15 minutes, and boom, you got the best Mexican rice. You're welcome. Hey everyone, it's Ariana, and I'm going to show you how to make the perfect steak. This is a classic. Sear to golden perfection on the outside and baste it with butter, garlic, and herbs. A not-so-subtle flex, but a few short years ago, this is the dish that ended up getting me on MasterChef Junior, so I trust the process. Restaurant quality beyond belief. Absolutely the dish of the night. Ariana! Step one is to season your steak of choice. I used ribeye with salt and pepper on both sides. Then I get a super hot cast iron pan, add oil, get that super hot, and then add the steak in there. After about three minutes, the steak should be perfectly golden on one side, so flip it over and get the other side. Now here's the secret. After the steak is seared on both sides, I add in two crushed cloves of garlic, a bunch of fresh herbs like rosemary, thyme, and sage, and a couple tablespoons of butter, and baste that over the steak. This creates an oven around the steak, which helps infuse it with all those flavors and cook it to perfection. Chef Ramsay, if you're watching this, I hope I made you proud. Hey everyone, it's Ariana, and not long ago, Addison Ray followed me on TikTok. To celebrate in the only way I know how, I decided to make Italian food, which according to the internet is Addison's favorite. To start our classic penne alla vodka, I boiled 16 ounces of penne in salted water, and then busted open a 28 ounce can of San Marzano tomatoes and blended them in the food processor. Then in a large pan goes two tablespoons of butter, three cloves of minced garlic, and a half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes, plus the tomatoes. Give it a mix, and then add in a fourth of a cup of vodka. Don't worry, fellow miners, all the alcohol cooks out. Simmer the sauce for 10 minutes on low, and then add in three fourths of a cup of Parmesan cheese and a cup of heavy cream, giving it another mix, and then season to taste with salt and pepper. Give it one last simmer for five minutes on low to thicken up, and then drain your pasta when it's al dente and add it to the sauce. Oh, look at that. At this point, my entire house smelled absolutely amazing. And this dish could not be complete without another sprinkle of Parmesan, fresh parsley, and more chili flakes. Everyone tag Addison so she sees this. Addison, if you're watching, I would love to cook for you one day. For recipes on my Instagram where I'm answering all my followers' comments. Hey everyone, it's Ariana, and I think we can all agree that Tiana's beignets and the Princess and the Frog look so unbelievably good. Today we're making them at home, and they're just as good as they look. In a mixer, stir together a cup and a fourth of warm milk plus a teaspoon and a half of yeast, and let this bloom for a few minutes. Then add a third of a cup of sugar and one and a half cups of flour. And once that's all combined into a batter, you can add an egg, two tablespoons of butter, and an additional two cups of flour. Switch over to the dough hook and mix it for about five minutes on setting two, and then about two minutes on setting four. After your dough should be all smooth and fluffy, you can also do these steps by hand, but it's just a little bit of a workout. Cover your bowl with plastic and then set it into a warm place to rise for about two hours. Once your dough has doubled in size, punch it down using your fist and then roll it out to about a third of an inch thickness. Cut out squares to the size you like and then heat your oil over medium high, adding your beignets in. You want to make sure that it's bubbling so that they'll fluff up right away. Make sure to keep an eye on them because they brown super quickly and then I finish them off with a little drizzle of honey and a mound of powdered sugar. Check out the full recipe on my Instagram where I reply to all my followers' comments. Yes, I'm back, people. And today I'm making my favorite crispy fried wings. I love them. You're going to love them, too, after you make them this way. Let's start by making our dry mix with all-purpose flour, cornstarch, baking powder, oregano, black pepper, salt, onion powder, garlic powder, celery seed, and paprika. We're going to mix it up pretty good. And then we're going to start our wet mix with egg, milk, and hot sauce, baby. Come on. And all of the seasonings from the dry mix. We're going to put it all together. And then we're going to start dipping our wings. We're going to go wet, dry, and then rest it. Re repeat that. Wet, dry, then rest it. Once the oil gets hot enough, then we're going to dump these babies in the hot oil. We're going to dump them in for like 12, 13 minutes. And when they come out, oh my God, look at that. Golden brown and crunchy. And I'm telling you, these will be the best wings you'll ever have. So you got to try them. Make sure you like and share this video. And leave a comment. Let me know how they came out. Later. 
from now on, I will only eat chicken this way. Not only is it super easy to make, it tastes delicious. To 700 grams of shredded chicken, add one teaspoon of mild paprika, one teaspoon of chili flakes, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of oregano, one teaspoon of black pepper, and a drizzle of oil. Mix well. If you already like our recipe, share this video with your friends. It would mean the world to us and we'd really appreciate it. From now on, I will use my hands to mix it so that the spices can blend well. Set the chicken aside and let's start with the next step. In a blender, add 280 grams of green corn, one cup of milk, one tablespoon of butter, 200 grams of- I need a super simple dinner after writing papers all day, so I'm gonna make Instant Pot creamy garlic chicken pasta. Get your Instant Pot and three chicken breasts. Yes, they're still frozen, but thank God for the Instant Pot. Season the chicken with some paprika, garlic powder, some onion powder, a little bit of Italian seasoning, and of course, salt and pepper. Measure with your heart. Add three and a half cups of low sodium chicken stock, Add half a white onion chopped. Add about one pound of elbow pasta. And add a good amount of minced garlic. Measure that with your heart. Make sure everything is submerged. If it's not, add a little bit more chicken stock till it is. Put the lid on, make sure it's on sealing. Cook for manual high pressure for 10 minutes. Release pressure when done. Take out the chicken and start shredding. Add it back in. Add 3 fourths of a cup of fat-free half and half and some Parmesan cheese. Mix it all together. You like burgers? Good. 15 minutes. Oh. One cup of mayo. Third cup of ketchup. Half a diced sweet onion. One diced dill pickle. And two tablespoons of Dijon. Season to taste with salt and black pepper. Whisk together. Easy burger sauce. For buns, you can do sesame or brioche. Slice in half. Spread on softened butter. Go to the damn edges. Both slices. Pan. Medium heat. Buns in. Toast your little men. Roasty and toasty. Obviously you need ground beef. Roll. Six ounce. Balls. To medium high. Your beef. Spatula. Press. Hit that with some salt. Pepper. Sear for two to three minutes. Flip, add on some cheese, give it a little melt. Some of that sauce. Always salt your tomato slices. Tomatoes, shredded lettuce, burger patty, more sauce. Crown your king. Yeah, that's messy in the best way. Oh. Oh. Let's make these healthy crispy chicken tenders with the perfect crust using no oil. Cut your chicken into strips, season with salt, pepper, garlic powder, paprika, cayenne pepper. Mix it all up and put it to the side. Add your crushed cornflakes and use the same seasoning you just used. Mix that all up, then crack two eggs in a bowl and whisk. Line a baking tray, then simply dip the chicken in the egg wash. Let it drip, put it in the crumbs, making sure they're all evenly coated. Then bake for 18 minutes at 200 degrees, flipping halfway, and you're ready to eat while they're hot hot sauce, garlic powder, black pepper, smoked paprika, honey, and salt to taste. Mix and you're good to go. I always serve it with my spicy chicken sandwiches, which I'm sharing tomorrow, and fries. Enjoy!